Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Tanks with Black Nike. And today we are having another review. And this is the follow-up tank of the A43. It's the A44, the tier 7 Russian medium tank. And well, as uh, I promised you, I did I do bring this out now, but well, I couldn't keep my promise of bringing it, bringing it out the day after the last review. Because, well, I didn't get any good material, I didn't get the time to do it, and well, I did something else instead. That took up a bit little less time. But, since we're now doing this review, I hope you are going to enjoy what you are going to see. And yeah, well, the A44, Russian tier 7 medium tank. It is a uh, less agile machine of the A43 and then the A43. And well, I did convert the crew of the A43 into this tank and got the new crew for the A43 because you can st still see it down there. I still have that tank. As you can see here, it's a back mounted tank. It's a little bit lower profile than T30, T43, not T3485 because that's a T6, but a T43. And it has a bigger gun than its counterparts. It has a 107mm Z6 gun. Which is only mountable on other heavy tanks from the Russians. KV-3, KV-4, the T-150 and the KV-2. But the KV-2 is not as nice with this gun as with the Dirk gun. But, well, it's actually the gun from the T-150 that you actually will be using on this gun tank so a 107 millimeter gun on this tank mountable you can also mount a 57 or 76 but it's not as good as the 107 millimeter mostly because you don't have the average damage and you will not have the penetration to get through all the enemies what this tank has also has uh, it's 1100 hit points and weighs 38.9 tons and that is with equipment without it's only a 38 tons because those equipments aren't cheap in weight and in money and well it has a 600 horsepower engine which gives it a specific power to rate ratio of 15.42 which isn't pretty good or anything but it's a tier 7 medium tank with a lower profile that's is quite good at side scraping and well pretty fast on its tracks it will do a 59 kilometers per hour and it has a traverse speed of 44 degrees per second. And now the stranger part comes in. It has a front hull armor of 150 millimeters. So this, with the sloping, as you can see, will be quite a lot. And we will be going over this tank in the tank inspector. So you guys will see what profits you will be getting with that frontal armor but although you still have the lower glazes pretty good in sight and well the sides and the rear are only 60 millimeters of armor so that's not really something to work with the turret armor instead of having a hundred and fifty front and less on the sides and rear it's 90 millimeters armor all around so all around this turret you will have a 90 millimeters of armor 
although these two might be a weak spot and that little turret on top is a weak spot as well and they will be shooting a lot at those spots although you are still a medium tank and you probably will be side scraping a lot but that's not really a big problem the standard shell damage an average of 300 so the maximum you can do is 375 damage that's pretty much for a tier 7 medium tank and there's only one tank that actually can well sort of cope with that and that's the Chinese T-34-1 and well I do have the T-34-2 and it has the 100mm cannon at the moment unlocked on it not the 122 mounted and that does less damage but it fires faster but at this tank you will be using that 107mm gun pretty good it well it has a downside of uh, having such a big gun on such a low tier premium uh, medium tank and I say low tier medium tank because well it's a tier 7 medium tank you will only be using this in random battles because well tier 6 company battles you're too high a tier team battles or tier 8 companies this tank just doesn't come up with the same extras as a tier 8 medium or a tier 8 heavy tank so this tank will not be used that much but it is a nice tank to grind to the rate of fire for that you will have a 5.71 rounds per minute rate of fire the turret turns a, a pretty quick 38 degrees per second and well this tank ain't for scouting it's 370 mm meters of fuel range will keep you uh, safe but you should not be spotting with this tank and it only has a 525 meters signal range with the best radar uh, radio it has a tier 8 radio and stock only a tier 4 radio so the signal range isn't that much and well if we are looking at the research tree stock you will not play this tank stock you will have this gun unlocked from the a43 as you can see characteristics it's here at the a43 and also the t34 has that unlocked and all those other tanks but with the t34 85 you will be using an 85 millimeter gun actually the a43 has the same gun as the t34 but since it's more agile and f fires faster with it it's not bad to have that gun so you are already having this gun the turret will cost you well 17,000 credits and well I can't see how much experience it will cost to unlock we will take a look at that in tank inspector maybe we can see it there you have the radio also unlocked on the T-34 already so that's no problem you will have that radio already unlocked and 600 horsepower engine will have 100 horsepower more than the stock engine and well if you unlocked the A43 completely you will have the engine already so no engine upgrades there and the tracks do not cost that much experience and it's the enhanced tracks and well, let's take a look at the difference between tracks a44 and a44 enhanced it will have a four tons of load limit increase a two degrees per second traverse speed increase and it doesn't weigh any more any more kilograms so that's not really a bad thing either and well looking at having such a big gun it's well it's having a penetration of 167 millimeters with normal shells on tier 7 that is a lot and well it's a lot for a medium tank at least because well 
It's a tier 6 heavy tank gun. Used at a medium tank. And well it's just, with this tank you will be having a lot of good use with this gun. And well the dispersion at 100 meters is 0.45. So you will almost have a lot of well you will be aim not really aiming at enemies in a d from a distance aiming time of 3.4 seconds so that's very bad so you shouldn't count on aiming at enemies and sniping at enemies but that's not what this tank is made for this tank is made for brawling getting closer to your enemies uh, standing at corners, side scraping while the enemies are still close to you. And, well, you will see me doing that. So, I hope this explains already, explains a whole lot. And, well, right now I'm going to explain a little bit about having things like this. The equipments uh, on your tank. For example, the medium caliber gun tank gun rammer. And well, most useful on this tank, probably the medium caliber tank gun rammer. Camouflage net will just take your agility away, it will not let you move around a lot. And for that, I didn't put it on. What ammo rack? Maybe because it's a Russian tank and you will get, be uh, getting ammo racked a lot. The improved ventilation class can all be, also be uh, put on it instead of the coated optics. But the coated optics does still give you a little bit of advantage over the other tier 7 medium tanks that will be charging towards you. And the medium spall liner. Well, if you're getting hit by artillery you're doing something wrong because this tank shouldn't be standing still and you shouldn't be driving in a straight line either so binocular scope you will have to be stationary for it to activate and well stationary being stationary with this tank isn't very useful as I explained earlier the coated optics it will give you the advantage while moving that you can spot enemy tanks faster than they can spot you and well let's talk a bit more cyclone filter gives you more engine durability the engine is somewhere in front but you will have a hundred and fifty millimeters of sloped armor in front of it to make sure it doesn't get hit the enhanced gun laying drive so you do get a bit more aiming speed and it takes off three uh, points uh, three four seconds of aiming time so you will be having almost three seconds aiming time it will uh, make your circle of aim a bit smaller while driving and thus let you hit more shots the co2 filled tanks well fuel tank durability i don't know what fuel tanks do when they're damaged or uh, well, when they're destroyed, they catch fire. When they're damaged, they are more likely to catch fire. But other than that, I don't know what it's supposed to do. And then you'll have the toolbox, which I am not using on any tank. So if you're more like I want to repair my tank faster than any, than other guy than other players. You can put it on, you have 25% more to repair speed. But I do suggest you put it instead of the coated optics then. And not instead of the gun laying drive or the tank gun rammer because the gun is the most powerful weapon of this tank. So I hope I explained all that pretty clearly to you guys. And well, I hope you guys are already considering to uh, get through this line but I hope you're not going to outrun me because I'm not having the most time available to grind out the tanks I have well if we're going to take a look at all the crew let's put on some personal files 
And we can take a look at that. The commander. Skills. I take sixth sense as first as my first skill on the commander. Because when you're spotted with this tank, it's nice to know when you're spotted in a tank. You could also say recon, but the view range isn't the strongest point of this tank. And this will uh, doesn't say uh, for how many meters it will increase your view range. You could go, uh, go for mentor and make sure the other crew members that are uh, running behind on their skills catch up easier. But it will go to... Well, the, co the commander will take less experience than the rest of the crew. So and then your commander will fall behind. You can go for a jack of all trades if that is complete. And for example, your loader gets killed. The commander can take over and do the job just as good as the loader. And you'll have eagle eye. Which will let your commander identify the critically damaged modules on enemy vehicles. And that could be useful because this is a brawling tank you're going to play. And all those Russian tanks in this line are brawling tanks. So having Eagle Eye on this command on the commander on this tank, in this tank line can be uh, handy in times when you are getting in close encounters and you know that you can hit weak spots easily but that the enemy is trying to get you out of away from those weak spots so for example you hit the engine you don't have eagle eye you are not sure that you hit the engine you will only notice that with heavy tanks when they are starting to move slower but for example, when you have knocked out one of the crew members, you will also see that with Eagle Eye. And you cannot always notice that there's a crew member killed. And then also you can use repairs or camouflage, but camouflage is something... Well, uh, it's averaged across the entire crew, so if the entire crew has camouflage, the effect will be at 100% when all crew has it set. Has it at 100%. But. Brothers in Arms at a medium tank is more useful. Because every aspect of the tank will become better at that moment. So. For first skill. I at least recommend 6th sense. Second skill. Or jack of all trades. Or eagle eye. Because the view range isn't important at this tank line if we're going to the gunner my first skill snapshot you will be driving a lot you will be turning your turrets a lot and having better accuracy with this inaccurate gun will make sure that you are hitting more enemies and you could go for armorer, but your gun will barely get damaged. I haven't gotten my gun damaged that much. And well, Deadeye is another good skill for the gunner of this tank. And after that, you can go for Brothers in Arms, same as for the commander. If you get to the fourth skill. So I hope you will having you will be having a lot of useful information from this already. And the driver. Again, I did take smooth ride. More accuracy while on the move. It's a skill that gets more effective mo the further that it gets into completion. It's pretty useful. You can go for clutch braking after that. But you could also go for off-road driving. And well, it reduces the ground resistance when driving on soft or and moderately soft terrain. So you will be driving uh, faster than when you're going off road. But you could also go for clutch braking, which will make sure that you could turn your tank in a nick of time. But it's more useful for slower tanks, and this isn't really a slow tank. So second skill is most likely 
to be off-road driving and after that you could go for repairs but you could also go for clutch braking so and that's a choice you are going to have to make yourself and then we do, we come at the radio operator right now here I did say sit, uh, put situational awareness because well the other things uh, call for vengeance if you do your job correctly this isn't needed signal boosting extends the signal range you will be brawling near enemy tanks most likely heavy tanks and you will have someone in the area which will have more signal range than your than you have and you could go for relaying but you're not a sniper tank so relaying isn't effective in this tank because well you're having lit less signal range than your teammates and you're probably further ahead of your teammates so there's no use there so after having a situational awareness you can go for repairs then camouflage or firefighting but brothers in arms all those brother all your crew have to start brothers in arms at the same time to make sure or at least at the same skill to make sure that you will have brothers in arms almost completed at the same time so you don't have a useless skill standing in your list and then we have the loader safe storage very important on Russian tanks the ammo rack is hit pretty easily every time after that you know, adrenaline rush if you're lucky you get below 10% of your hit points so that's below 110 health points and you will have a 10% or at least a lot of more reload speed while having that little health points and intuition if you are going to load any APCR or high explosives intuition is going to be useful for you otherwise I recommend going for repairs as second or third and then brothers in arms just depends on how you like your crew members so well just just something to take a pretty good look at when you are going to playing this tank line and well now we are going to take a look at the armor values of this tank in tank inspector so let's take that one out so here we are having tank inspector and well as you can already see oh not too far it's the a43 I popped up already it costs you 1,380,000 credits you should already know that because it's tier 7 medium and, well, let's take a look at how much experience this thing will cost it doesn't say and I can't really find anything about this so let's not take a look at that and as you can see here we are having quite a lot of armor values standing in this area so it seems we have a lot of different areas to take a look at I already looked at quite a lot from what you are seeing here let's see what this is going to look like and wait a second didn't I say this was 150 millimeters of frontal armor actually that's only 75 millimeters so world of tanks and wargaming have made this tank worse than it's on paper here is a 150 millimeters of tank armor and that's barely sloped any. just like that it's barely sloped if you're going to go straight up against it you only need a 200 millimeters of penetration but still it's going to bounce quite a lot if you're standing like this you are hiding well that part to there to there and you are only showing this little bit which is well, not that much, but people are starting to panic when you are showing that. You only have 30 millimeters of armor on the front there and there, so they probably do not bounce on that. Add the 60 millimeters of armor when you're side scraping, that will be pretty useful. 
The armor, as I said, 90 millimeters all around. And it doesn't account for that weak spot, you can see there. It doesn't account for that. And as we are seeing, there's two little stripes here. 120 millimeters of armor. Zooming a little bit on that. There is a 60 millimeters of armor in between there. And a... S what? That's actually... Zero armor of... Zero millimeters of spaced armor. But it's a 60 millimeters still where it's in front. But you should not count on bouncing any shots there. Well, there's 128 millimeters of 120 millimeters of spaced armor, and the gun mantlet, and the tracks are a 20 millimeters of spaced armor with 60 millimeters of normal armor. Besides it, so that's not that bad. And well, that's just about everything. Right here, we by the way have a 90 millimeters of armor strip at the back. Yeah, as you can see, it's what changes the upper slope towards the lower sl uh, plate. The upper plate towards the lower plate. And those are 60 millimeters. So they could be still bouncing something if they hit that and are unlucky. And I say unlucky because well, this tank doesn't have the armor values of a heavy tank. But I found, found it pretty important to show you guys that this tank does have some kind of armor and that you might be able to use it correctly but you should not count on bouncing anything with a medium tank unless you're playing germans so right now i'm going to be showing you guys some matches i had in this tank that actually were pretty good and well we are now having well, a game on El Halouf where I am going to show you guys how to play this tank in somewhat the correct manner and well it's a normal thing to go for light tanks and a bit faster medium tanks to go down into the riverbed and see if they can rack up some damage there and well hopefully survive while getting there and i'm not the only one going there there's one amx 1390 who is following me he's like yeah if you can do that i can do that too and well moving i'm moving here now and there suddenly is an amx 1390 and I thought I was going to be shot at, I thought he was going to shoot at me too, but it seems he's not going to shoot at me. And there you saw the accuracy of the gun, isn't that good. And my teammate 1390 is actually pretty stupid, but the enemy 1390 isn't that bright either. So he does get away from me, I didn't get to put a second shot into him. I should have aimed a bit better with the first shot, but with the second shot I put uh, towards him, but that's too late now. So, I get up here, so I can side scrape, although it's not pretty useful uh, with this position with this tank. And when I see that 1390 moving up, I decide I have to move up too. And there's two tier 9 tank strikes waiting for us. So we cannot be moving up any more than we are already doing. Right now, moving backwards. Now I'm using the part of my tank that says back mounted turrets. I now spot the Centurion 1 out there. And I notice we are in big trouble because that AMX 1390 will not be able to go up against a centurion one at the moment i do get a shot in 283 damage and i block him here but i couldn't have saved him when i didn't block him and i finish off the centurion one wanted to cry and uh, get behind him but i didn't 
And instead of my gun getting taken out, my gunner got taken out. So I heal my gunner. And I use my back mounted turret there again in the right manner. Keeping my body safe behind the wreck of the AMX 3090. And using my turret armor for as much as I can. And well, the 3002D wasn't able to counter me with when I did that, so. Right now, I'm seeing if I can spot something, but this wreck is in the way. And well, I do spot the tortoise. And I decide I'm going back a bit again. I could see him, but he moved forward again. So I can't see him again. And well. My waiting gets rewarded and he's moving back with his backward towards me. And I I now and I now notice the T95 is also moving off and well that's only giving me more space. And giving a medium tank in this position more space is a bad thing. As you can see the tortoise thought I would have still been it there. I am willing to pop out, but I am not willing to take the risks. Because the tortoise isn't getting shot at. T95 is getting shot at rather than me. Right now, that 3002D came out. My average damage is higher than his, but my aiming time and my reload time are a lot lower than his. But I do get some help from the Act Panther. And he finishes him off. So right now I have a full flank completely to myself. But there's a T45E1. Uh, moving up a little bit still. So it seems I cannot do anything against that. But instead of moving, moving on. That guy decides it's not safe. And he goes the other way eventually so right now I'm concerned still concerned about the tier 7 tank destroyer and tier 9 medium tank that's out there I'm going to try to spot something I I should have spotted something there not uh, popping out completely I saw Jingles' video with the T341 but instead I start moving around it again because the tortoise is a pretty attractive target to me. But I do not, not get any shot on him. And that means I do have to be pulling back or actually getting up the hill. So let's move through that way then. The tortoise still is at a good position. And we are going to take advantage of his positioning. Right now I'm probably the one spotting him. He's noticing, not noticing now, that I am actually spotting him. Now he noticed. So I start moving back. He misses because I moved at just the right moment when he did a and I start moving this rack from the 1390 aside taking good use of this spot again and right now I do have a warning that when it gets harder to move back I am hitting the rack and I'm actually too far back T54E1 that is sniping at the front of a tortoise is saying hard to penetrate a tortoise. And well, of course it's hard to penetrate a tortoise when you're hitting from a distance. He's hitting from 500 meters away or something. And well, he's hitting the frontal, uh, frontal plate where I am hitting the side. So I can do quite a lot of damage here. And well, this shows. You do have the ability to snipe, but you should not try it when the target is shooting back, because your aiming time isn't high enough for that. 
isn't fast enough. So, right now, I notice the area is safe. And we have a tier 9 heavy tank going up against a T-54. T-54 should be able to win that. Because, well, it's a brawling tank versus a tank that's better at sniping. Right now, I'm thinking, yeah, I have to watch out that that T25-2 slash 2 isn't there to shoot at me. Because, well, I can only take two shots from him. After that, I'm dead. If he does get a shot in on me, I can't pull back fast enough to kill him. At this point, I thought there's no artillery in the game. You can be a scumbag. But I'm not moving further any any further this way because the weapon tracker should have spotted him before he moved off. And otherwise he would be in the water. Because they're actually losing pretty much. The SU-14-2 finishes off our T-54. So that's kind of a downturn. But we still have a very big advantage of 5 tanks more than the enemy has. So I'm moving up here. The enemy could have been hiding here, but when I'm up, there isn't any other place they could be hiding. Because their engines aren't strong enough for their weight limits. And there, I spotted both enemy tanks. Right there, I'm unlucky. I miss him. But he misses me as well. And instead of keeping my movement up, I move back. My turret pops up a little bit and I hit him. And well, here I notice nothing. But I actually hit him in the turret ring. So I keep moving. And right now, I notice, now notice, he's got his turret ring damaged. And he's not trying anything anymore. Aim, fire, kill. So. And that's the first game, as you could see, using the turret position pretty much at the correct moment, popping up with a little bit of my tank visible to the enemy, and furthermore, not showing anything else. And well, that means you can hide your body behind rocks and only show your turret when the rocks are lower at a certain point, but higher at the rest. And you shouldn't have to side scrape at that moment. But this wasn't the only game that went well while using this tank. Where I can actually show you guys how the playing style of this tank is working out for me. And maybe it will work out for you in the same way. So well, let's take a look at the next game. So here is another game. And this is on... Hidden Village. This map only sh lets you move around half of the complete map. So the other half is pretty useless. And medium tanks are quite useful in the village in this game, in this map. And I'm in medium tank. So let's move into the village. And if you want to see something funny, let's show it to you guys. M5 Stewart. He decides I'm going to move in front of you. Wait a second, where did he go? M5 Stewart just, just disappeared. Hey, there he is! He thought he could cross out there. He couldn't, but at least he didn't drown, so no problem. He just made a little bit of a miscalculation on where he could cross the river. That's no big deal. So Directly taking up a position where I can put my gun to bear on the enemies. Cheeto has been spotted and the AMX-40 has been spotted as well. There's the enemy AL ELC. I could, couldn't point my gun up far enough. I actually tried to get a hit on. And well, that's not pre-aimed enough. It did get right behind him. That Hellcat, well I was reloading so that Hellcat could, couldn't be hit, so that's a shame. Right now 
there it is. The frontal armor does have some use. There's the Hellcat, that Hellcat again. Wait a second, there's the LCA Max moving there. And I kill him. That's the first kill. Wait a second, is the first kill in the game? It is made by me. Oh, there's another bounce. Second kill. Two kills already. Putting the agility into the, into the game. I thought I'm going to kill him. Oh, shot missed. Hmm. That's just too bad. I wanted to ram him, but I hit this rock instead, and he gets on the way fast enough. But he kept he kept moving back him back a little bit too long. I kill him as well. Kill number three. Three two. And hey, wait a second. That's not a kill. I can hit that AMX. But I'm not reloaded. He shoots me and he pulls back. Okay. Not my problem. I'll just move in. Oh dear. If he gets killed before I get him. That's not good. I take his track. Shot through the building or anything like that. And I get my fourth, fifth kill already. And wait a second. There's another one. He's also almost dead. Seems I only have to finish what I start, what uh, the team started, and I finish off my sixth kill, and I just keep on moving. And right now, I dunk my shot, not aiming correctly. As you can see, I aimed too high and I miss my shot. And there's the bad accuracy, and the SU-152 finishes him off. So my seventh kill, seventh kill in of the team isn't finished right away. The shot I took there was in the side from the E25. Wait a second, there's something shooting us. S I s it seems I can't hit him. The E25 gets a shot in on me and he notices that he's been spotted because I start aiming at him and the Hellcat was in the cap and he's going to counter that Hellcat. I wanted to get a shot in he out here too but I couldn't aim good enough for my own liking. I did fire, but I missed. Right now, it seemed I could hit him, but he moved down just in time and I missed again. So, six kills already, but I haven't done any big significant damage, uh, damaging hits. So, we should start moving up. The only real damaging hit I had was on that E25. Well, it's a tier 7 tank, we're in a tier 7 match, so that's one of the hits that is going to bring me the experience. Right now, I spot the tiger, or at least it, I noticed that the tiger is standing in the right position. Put a shot uh, onto him, and he spotted me before I shot him. Well, because I'm a medium tank and in sight of his spotting range he could spot me right now I'm going to sh to use my turret again he's not going to be able he's not able to shoot anything else than my turret I pop up put a shot into towards him not even into him and get back behind the, li the hill then again well, the tiger just keeps on aiming at me. Again, misses his shot. The SU-152 is already watching pretty carefully at what's happening. I dunk my shot at him. And instead of finishing him off, I move on. K-1S there. Saw if I had, looked if I could get a shot in on him. But he's behind a hill against a Tark-2. That has a lot of more firing Fire, refire rate. And, oh dear. Our turn is near our issue. Talk to wins from the KV-1S. Our KV-1S wins from the other KV-1S. Our turn misses a shot on the issue, but... And vice versa. I do get a bit of aim here. But I ba just barely miss him. And I have to keep moving to make sure I keep up. Right now, I am very lucky, and I hit him in the back, killing the last enemy. 
and taking seven kills. And this game, I did a lot less damage, but as you could see, I moved around. I used my armor, I used my move, uh, movement speed, and I actually went behind the hill a little bit and pulled back to make sure I could take shots at that tiger that is there, wrecked by the SU-152, who's behind me at full health points. So I hope you guys are going to like this tank, and I hope you guys uh, notice that the actions I took was in was all to favor my tank mostly, and to make sure that whatever I would be getting into, I would be able to finish and to make sure I could make the kill or do the most damage with that decision. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and also enjoyed the gameplay because it wasn't that bad of a gameplay for me. And well, I hope you are going to watch the next review from this tank line as well. And that will be the object 416 and I haven't unlocked it yet so you will be have thing that you will have to take the time to wait for me uploading a review about that tank and I hope I can do it soon so I will hope I don't have to let you guys wait too long for it and well, goodbye, take care on the battlefield and watch your backs on the battlefield because maybe I'll be behind you to put some shots into it.